हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द एलिमेंट्री डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी अंडरस्टूड अबाउट द डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल्स दिस डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल्स आर द सीक्वेंस ऑफ नंबर्स दैट आर डिफाइंड एट डिस्क्रीट इंटरवल्स ऑफ टाइम सो डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल्स आर डिफाइंड एट ओनली द डिस्क्रीट इंटरवल्स ऑफ टाइम देयर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एलिमेंट्री सिग्नल्स लाइक यूनिट सैंपल सीक्वेंस यूनिट स्टेप सिग्नल यूनिट रैम सिग्नल एंड एक्सपोनेंशियल सिग्नल सो वील अंडरस्टैंड दीज सिग्नल्स वन बाय वन दीज एलिमेंट्री सिग्नल्स आर फंडामेंटल इन डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स एंड कम्युनिकेशंस सो दीज एलिमेंट्री सिग्नल्स आर बेसिक आर फंडामेंटल इन डी एस पी कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन द अंडरस्टैंडिंग of these signals are very much essential for analyzing designing of digital systems so to analyze and design the digital systems these elementary signals are very much essential let us understand the first type of elementary discrete time signal which is an unit sample sequence which is also known as impulse signal the impulse signal or unit sample sequence is defined or represented as delta of n so this signal can be represented as delta of n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 0 and delta of n will be equal to 0 if n is not equal to 0 which means this function or this signal is available only at n is equal to 0 for other values of n this signal will be 0 so at n is equal to 0 this signal will be having the amplitude as 1 so this is represented in this diagram as you can observe delta of n is 1 for n is equal to 0 for other values of n this signal is having the value as 0 so this signal is available only for n is equal to 0 and other values of n this signal is 0 so this signal is 0 everywhere except n is equal to 0 at n is equal to 0 it is having the value as 1 so graphically we have represented a signal spike at n is equal to 0 which is having the value as 1 as you can observe in this diagram now let us understand a unit step signal this unit step signal can be represented as u of n so u of n represents the unit step signal we can define this signal as u of n is equal to 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 and u of n will be equal to 0 for n less than 0 so from this we understood that this signal will be available for n greater than or equal to 0 with the value 1 and for n less than 0 the signal will be 0 as you can observe in this diagram so here for n value less than 0 the signal is having the value as 0 and for n value equal to 0 and greater than 0 the value of the signal is having the amplitude as 1 so if you observe this diagram it is looking like a step that's why it is known as unit step signal so this signal represents a sudden change like a turning on a switch so initially the switch is zero and once we turn on the switch the switch is having the state 1 so the signal will be available similar to turning on a switch so graphical representation a step that start at n is equal to 0 so a step will start at n is equal to 0 before n is equal to 0 the value is 0 next is unit ram signal it is denoted as u r of n sometimes it is also denoted as simply r of n it can be defined as u r of n will be equal to n for n value greater than or equal to 
and u r of n will be equal to 0 for n less than 0. So, this signal is available only for n greater than or equal to 0. For n value less than 0, this signal will be equal to 0. So, here as you can observe, this signal is taking the value similar to n, which means u r of n is equal to n. For n value equal to 0, this signal will be equal to 0. For n value equal to 1, this signal will be having the value as 1. For n is equal to 2, the signal is 2. So, as you can observe here, for n is equal to 0, this signal is having the value as 0. For n is equal to 1, the signal is having the value as 1. For n is equal to 2, the signal is 2 n is equal to 3, the signal is 3 and so on up to infinity. So, the sequence will start at n is equal to 0 and it increases linearly and the signal will be equal to 0 for n less than 0. So, the characteristics of unit ram signal is that it increases linearly and the signal will start at n is equal to 0. So, graphically, we can represent the signal as a slope line that begins at origin, which means the signal will begin at n is equal to 0 and the signal increases linearly and it looks like a slope. Next elementary signal is exponential signal that can be represented as x of n is equal to a to the power of n. In this formula, if the value of a is less than 1, it represents the decaying signal and if the value of a is greater than 1, it represents the increasing exponential growth of the signal. So, this you need to remember. In this formula, if the value of a is less than 1, it represents the decaying signal, the signal which is decreasing and if the value of a is greater than 1, it shows the increasing exponential signal. We can represent the signal in the complex way as x of n is equal to r to the power of n exponential to the power of j theta n. So, exponential to the power of j theta n, we can write it as cos theta n plus j sin theta n which represents the complex component. So, if we substitute that value in this formula, we will get r to the power of n into cos theta n plus j theta n. So, here theta represents the angular frequency of the signal. So, theta represents the angular frequency of signal. n represents the discrete time index. So, this is the discrete time value or discrete time index of the signal and theta n represents the phase angle of the signal at a discrete time n. So, if we are writing theta n, so that represents, we are representing the phase angle at a particular discrete time n. So, graphically, we can represent this signal as a real part as well as the imaginary part. The real part of the signal x r of n can be represented as r to the power of n cos theta n. So, that represents a damped cosine signal and the imaginary part x i of n can be represented as r to the power of n sin theta n that represents the damped sinusoidal signal. So, here as you can observe in this equation, this signal will vary depending upon the value of r as well as theta. So, here the main parameter that varies the signal is r as well as theta. So, this formula represents the exponential signal. Here, the exponential signal will depend upon the value of a. If the value of a is greater than 1, at that case, we will get the sequence which grows exponentially. If the value of a is between 0 and 1, we will get a sequence that decays exponentially. So, we will get 
exponentially decreasing signal for a between the value 0 and 1 and we'll get exponentially increasing signal for a greater than 1. If the value of a is less than 1, which means if a is between minus 1 and 0 and if a is less than minus 1, we'll get the sequence of signal that takes the alternate sign as you can observe in this diagram. So this is the representation for A ranging between minus 1 and 0 and this is the representation for A less than minus 1. So if the value of A is less than 0, the exponential signal will take the alternate values or alternate sign as you can observe from this sequence. Here x of n is equal to r to the power of n cos theta n plus j sin theta n represents a complex representation of exponential signal. So for this sequence we can identify phase as well as amplitude. The amplitude of this signal can be represented as magnitude of x of n that can be given as a of n that is equal to r to the power of n. So r to the power of n in this formula represents the amplitude of the function or the amplitude of the signal. The phase of the signal can be represented as phi of n that is represented as theta n. So theta n represents the phase of the sequence. So in this complex representation of exponential signal, R of n represents the amplitude of the signal that can be obtained by taking the magnitude of the signal x of n and theta n represents the phase of the signal or phase of the function. Here you need to remember that the phase is often plotted modulo 2 pi that makes the signal cyclic. So which means after every range 2 pi, the signal will be repeating. The modulo 2 pi is the remainder value when we divide the phase by 2 pi. So we are dividing the phase by 2 pi to make the signal within the range of 0 to 2 pi, which makes the signal repeat itself after every 2 pi cycle. So just remember modulo 2 pi represents or makes the signal cyclic which means the signal will be repeating after every time period 2 pi. So this is the representation of real part of an exponential signal that represents the cosine damped signal. So damped signal that gradually reduces to 0. So this is a cosine signal that gradually damping and this sequence represents the sinusoidal signal which represents the damping sinusoidal waveform which gradually reduces to zero. And this is about the elementary discrete time signals. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.